Hi, this is Leah Lung, uh, founder of Bump and Baby. I'm so excited for today's episode. We are here with Jade Eckert, who is an early childhood educator as well as a mom of two. And we are here to talk about respectful parenting. Um, Jade, do you wanna take a moment to share with us how this topic became of interest to you? Yeah, sure. So I suppose it really came into light after I had my first child and just doing a couple parenting classes and getting a bit of an understanding on connection and attachment in general kind of sparked that I guess flame inside of me to kind of see that there was like that area lacking in what I had been doing or what I knew to what I wanted to do with my children and I think just from that, I thought, well, there's so much, there's so much to learn and just kind of, even if it's not around like improving my child's connection, it can improve like the connection with the different relationships in my life. And even just passing on that knowledge to others, I thought would be quite beneficial and yeah, worthwhile. Thank you. So you have a um, 10 month old and a two and a half year old. Um, so during those early periods where children aren't able to verbalize and tell us what they need, how can we do respectful parenting that um, is mindful of their emotions and their needs without them having to um, actually say them out loud to us? Yeah, so I think the first thing that comes to mind when you ask that is just the language that we use. Um, although they may not be able to verbalize to us, they're still able, will, can hear us and are listening. So I think the way that we speak about them and to them really matters mm -hmm. as the words that they hear become their inner voices and it shapes how they see themselves. And from that, obviously using disrespectful language isn't um, something that is needed at all. And following our language, if you start to look into just letting them know that they're seen and letting them know that you are there and understanding that during these times that they're nonverbal and they are developing their language, that their behaviour will be their communication in a sense, which will most likely, they're expressing their emotions through their behaviors so those meltdowns those tantrums are all things that they can't tell us but um they're letting us know that something is bothering them something's upset them so from that just you know allowing them to feel those emotions to begin with is super important not shaming them um naming the emotion importantly making sure they're safe so um with anger i guess you know gently moving them away or holding their hands and letting them know I won't let you hurt me um, can really, it's still, you're still having those boundaries there, but you're still keeping them safe and kind of directing them into a calmer state in a sense. Um, but most importantly, like during those times, don't rush to stop it either because it's important for them to experience it and Know, know that those emotions are okay and that you are there to help them through it. Uh, and then from that, you can connect with them and empathize and validate those emotions. And then from that, you can do the more of the coping and the strategies um, and then even the problem solving afterwards, which is really important. But I guess in those, like to be respectful at the beginning, empathy is a massive thing. So just, yeah trying to see it from their perspective and understanding why why might they why might they be acting like this but also not so much the act focusing on the feeling so why are they feeling like this or I felt anger before when that's happened so they're obviously feeling anger but their incident might be much minor than what my incident was mm -hmm. yeah um I really like your emphasis on mm -hmm. language and how you um talk about them and talk to them. Yeah. Um, my knee-jerk reaction when my child is upset about something that 
um, is not safe for them or it's just not possible for them to have it is immediately to be like, no, because A, B, C. But it yeah. sounds like before you set that boundary of saying mm. this is impossible, you would take a moment to kind of just acknowledge that they want that thing. Yes, yes, because I guess until the age of five and six, they're thinking fully with their emotional brain. So they've got no real logic or rational thinking behind things. And I guess that's what us as adults are there for, to think logically for them. Mm -hmm. So in that um, sense, like the way you are going to speak to them when they are upset or want something that they can't have or is dangerous, you can, I guess, narrate in a sense, like I can see that you're upset or um, just narrate what's happening. And although it may seem a bit silly at the time and when they're screaming, it might be a bit overwhelming. Um, as long as you're regulated and keeping calm, they're going to feel your vibes as well, hopefully. <laughs> um, so I guess an example of that was I was thinking about that, um, which is very hard. So you could say something along the lines of like, I see you want to grab or I want you want to touch the fire, but it's very hot. Let's go over here and look at it together. So kind of not making it about them and that they're doing something wrong, um, kind of just acknowledging that they want to do something, letting them know that there's, you know, um, a potential dangerous outcome to it. And then, you know, shifting them and changing their, I guess, the, the way they're thinking and doing it together. And then you can discuss the fire. You can, you know, go a little bit deeper. Um, mm, and so yeah. it doesn't dampen their curiosity about the fire because you want to stoke that natural curiosity, yeah. but just yes. approaching it from a safe way. Yeah, absolutely. And even in those sense, in that um, incident, um, just let them express their emotion. Like it's probably, it's more, it's harder on us as parents to, sometimes sit with their big emotions than it is for them um so that's a really important time to kind of make sure you're regulated yourself like your emotions are in check that they can experience what they're experiencing and they know that you're there you're a safe place um and that they can come to you and you're going to support them through those emotions mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so when you see your child having a strong reaction to something you reflect back what you see like I see that you are like this or like this and that yeah. helps them feel understood and seen yes absolutely so yeah um it promotes that your understanding um and yeah you're seeing them you're seeing that they're upset um I can see that you're upset that we can't you know go there but um you know it's acknowledging that they're feeling it and it's okay to feel it. Mm -hmm. What's your approach to sharing? Because this comes up a lot on play dates, you know, um, at daycare. Um, if, uh, yeah, I just feel like it's really tricky because you want to be diplomatic as a parent and, you, and you're invariably going to be in both positions where there's another kid that grabs something from your kid and you're like, yeah. and then also like when your kid does the same, you know? Yeah. 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 Um, sharing is quite tricky. I'm, I'm at that point myself where I have to really like, it's a big thing in our household at the moment, but it's not really a concept that's understood by them when they're younger. Like then they don't really have that empathetic understanding of, or oh, I've taken that toy away. That's upset someone's feelings. Mm -hmm. So they, yeah, they can't really see it from the other child's perspective in that sense. But I guess the first thing again is make sure they're safe so if there's violence involved or threats um then you need like I would 100% step in and kind of just have your authority and you know in a calm low voice be like I won't let you do that I can't let you hit and then I do that with if it's the other child doing that because I feel so awkward it, because I'm not their parent and I don't want their parent to think I'm overstepping my bounds but I also want to protect my child in that sense um I would well all you can physically do is like your child in a sense so kind of um maybe even hold your child's hand move your child away and just let the other child know that oh um I'm taking my daughter away because I won't let you hit her 
or you know you're kind of stepping in and letting them know that that behavior is not acceptable but at the same time that other child's experiencing you know a big emotion or they can't they're dysregulated um so all you can really take responsibility for is your own child in that sense so Mm -hmm. which um and then I guess from removing them you have to you deal with their emotions and what they're going through um a good thing is um like taking turns so like the long term is um something that I incorporate which is um so for example if my daughter or if my son has something um it's like well you know William's having a long turn now would you like to play with something else so the long turn is I guess in a sense like this is his toy like he has the right to have his toy you can't just come take someone's toy away so kind of letting her know that it's his but in a non-threatening way I guess in a sense if you're letting them know that they're having a long turn um do you want to go find something else or if it comes down to it like a time is really good if the children are older um you know he's going to play with the toy for 10 minutes when the timer beeps you can have the toy so then they're both on the same terms or um what's the other thing or even if you promote I guess in a sense like joint play because children are great problem solvers in a sense like if you're approaching the situation in a non-threatening way they are generally more open to have people be involved and have discussions and play with others so in that sense you could I guess kind of in a sense praise what they've done so wow that you've made a great tower there could you know, so-and-so come join in with you and make another tower or do you want to build a farm together? Um, But then we do need to respect children if they want to, you know, if it's their toys, if they want to play with them, that's, I guess, their right. You know, we wouldn't like someone coming and taking something away from us and playing with it without, you know, our permission or our, um, like, us allowing it. And then also um like independent play as well like children don't have to play with other children if they don't want to like it's it's tricky because I feel like a lot of the time it's us dealing with our big emotion like our own or our children need to play with other kids or they're not going to get you know that social interaction or parents are going to think my child isn't you know this or that it's it comes back to the parent a lot of the time when we kind of force or sharing or force playing together it's it's more important to let them kind of do what they need to do and then, you know, stepping in when there is that, like, safety concern in a sense. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's interesting you bring up that it oftentimes yeah. reflects on our own experiences because yeah. something like that happened to me recently. Um, well, the way I grew up, um, there was not very much diversity where I lived and um, I experienced, I did experience a lot of racism growing up where kids would overtly say stuff to me or just subtly be like, oh, I don't want to play with her because she's different, you know, and we were on the playground and something like that kind of happened to my child and it was extremely triggering to me. So um, I was just wondering, like, how can we um, teach our kids to be very open and accepting of all different kinds of people, whether it's like their race or maybe the um, they are transgender or whatever. It's not like what they see most of the time. Yeah. Um, so I guess that comes back to empathy in a sense. So like, which is a tool that they don't fully have, but they, if you model it, that's, you know, children are big on, you know, imitation and following everything you do. So the most important thing, I guess, like is as the parent modeling that diversity, that acceptance of others, um, responding to others with empathy um, and being consistent about it. And then even just the way we speak, like as mentioned, the way you speak about others and um, yourself in general, the two, like kids are picking up on that thing. So it's very important. They are. They're always yeah. listening, even when you don't oh, know who they are. Yeah. Yes, always listening. Like some of the things my two-year-old comes out with, I'm like, oh my goodness, like you are a mini me, but it's, yeah, they are listening all the time. So just, I guess, being accepting, um, 
that I think that's the best thing you can do is like model it, model it yourself. When they see it in action, they they'll feel it, they'll um, experience it firsthand from you, and it really allows them to eventually better understand it themselves and then be able to offer it to others well like if they don't know any different if that's what you're doing then that's what they're going to kind of see as you know acceptable and the normal and that's how they're going to go about it that's what how I would kind of address that I believe mm -hmm. how do you recommend dealing with feelings of rejection like um like say your child really wants to you um you know, go on this play structure and there might be like one or two other kids there and your child's like, hey, can I play with you guys? And they're like, no, we're doing our own. You know, like that happens to everybody. And I feel so like, um, like it's so painful um, yes. to see that happen and your child's feeling re that rejection. How do you um, talk to your child? And do you try to approach the other kids too? Or do you just kind of allow your own child to kind of come to terms with that yeah I think um it like the first thing as you mentioned like it's really hard on us so we need to make sure that we're kind of regulated and our emotions are in check um when we are handling something like this because we want to respond to it rather than react to that kind of incident incident because um I suppose like we want to protect our children we don't want to see them hurt we don't want to see them you know <laughs> be bullied or harassed which is not acceptable at all um and that's kind of a great opportunity to promote like resilience and coping strategies in a sense and um like we can't control what other children are gonna do all the time like we might witness that one um thing happen but there's probably going to be thousands of things that happen when we're not there to witness it um, so how we can support um, our children through it is at like first, I suppose, like acknowledging their emotions and what they're going through. So in regards to that, like, oh, like naming what happened in a sense, like, oh, you really wanted to go on the swing, but they pushed in front of you. That's really disappointing. Um, let's wait for them to finish and then you can go on. Uh, so kind of giving so you're kind of problem solving but also acknowledging that like it doesn't feel good for that to happen but it's gonna happen um so you're being empathetic you're naming the emotion and then you can even ask them how like develop that connection ask them how it made them feel like that wasn't very nice when that person did like when that child did that how'd that make you feel and they might say and if they can that's awesome if they can say oh it made me feel really sad it's like well that's yeah and then kind of acknowledge it connect with them and be like yeah I feel sad when people push in front of me or do things that I don't like as well um and then kind of offering that coping strategy in a sense like well you know the swing's still going to be there once they get off you can go on it but did you want to go on the slide now um and then yeah you're kind of problem solving as well but, but it's really tricky because um saying these things I can say them but in the heat of the moment it can be very overwhelming even as parents like oh my gosh my that you like you just want to cuddle them and be like it's okay it's okay but sometimes saying it's okay is kind of dismissing their feelings and you're kind of just putting a blanket over it whereas once you dig a little bit deeper and actually talk about it it will you know if that happens again I'm like well this makes me feel sad what did I do last time or yeah like mum said you know go do something else and then go back to it it's kind of yeah building that resilience as well mm -hmm. I love what you said about how it's it's going to happen because um, I think it's such a universal thing to feel rejected at some point as a child. And what you said that we're not always going to be there to witness this, but it's going to happen. So building those skills for reflecting on what they're feeling and perhaps using that to build empathy in the future for how they treat other people is so yeah. important. So then they can do that even when we're not there seeing it happen. Definitely. Um even just these emotions like just letting them feel them and like acknowledging and naming them will help them so, later in life when they're teenagers and yeah. you know health is such a big thing now if you can help your child kind of name acknowledge 
you know, have some coping strategies when they are feeling angry, upset. It's they're going to carry on through life in a sense when they are feeling those emotions at different stages so mm -hmm. yeah so, yeah being with them and acknowledging that feelings are there because we've kind of some yeah it, they've been dismissed at times I think <laughs> well um I just have one last question for you so how do you um approach it when the grandparents are involved in the child's life but they are parenting in a very different way that reflects a prior era where it was all about setting boundaries and solving problems and not so much about allowing your child to feel things or to explore, you know, things that might be dirty or messy. Um, how do you um, approach that with the grandparents? I think the first thing um, for the parent is to make sure your emotions in check are in check. So make sure you're regulated when you are approaching this because you can become quite defensive. Um, and then being empathetic. So having that understanding as to why, why my, my parents or grandparents be, you know, um, you know, promoting that or um, encouraging this or like stopping them from doing that. And then having just that I think just a calm conversation and even just educating them on you know letting them know that you know it's important for them to experience this and um you know they can express those emotions you know when they're crying that's that's a sign that they've gone through something and they're allowed to cry you know we shouldn't stop them from crying and even just the way you speak I guess practice what you preach in a sense so you know, if they see you acting like um, doing what you do with your children and then hopefully, you know, they'll kind of see that connection and um, attachment that you're developing with them. And, yeah, it's a tricky one, but setting boundaries as well, you know, letting them know what, what doesn't sit well with you and um, just asking them to respect that, I think, is important. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And for me too, like some of it was letting go, like um, I, you know, things have changed between raising a child's last generation, this generation from like sleeping on their stomach to only sleeping on their back from not starting solids until six months, you know, like, and then I found out later, my mom had already started feeding her food when she was four months old. And I was like, <laughs> you know, and, but she survived and she's fine. Yeah. So I'm just part of it is just like letting go and letting, yeah. you know, accepting that people are going to treat your child differently than you would treat them and and you know sometimes it, it is okay you know, yeah. You yes. yeah I fully agree and I hope you you know the people that you're leaving to well I hope the people that you're leaving your children to be with are people that you trust that you love and you know that they're going to love your child but it might just be different to the way that you love them as well and show that you love them and connect with them um, but saying that, yes, you like, hopefully their intentions are always good. <laughs> well, thank you so much for coming on our episode today on respectful parenting. I really, really appreciate your taking the time to do this. Hey, it was fun. Thank you for having me. It was awesome. How can people find you if they want to learn more from you? Yeah. Uh, so I'm mainly just on Instagram at the moment. So it's just kind connections, education, or and in my bio on Instagram, I have a free Facebook group, which I um, keep you all updated in as well. Great. Thank you so much. Wonderful resources. No worries. Beautiful. Thank you.